What's going on everyone? My name is MG The Future. Thank you for joining me on my channel today. Um, one of my viewers a week ago had asked me to also do an arrangement video for one of his tracks. Um, that seems to be low-key popular. A lot of people like the conversation of arranging because everything else is kind of just, you know, preference now. Especially with the, the playing field being uh, <laughs> leveled with different technology that we have access to, which I've talked about for the past couple of months. But arrangement, I could see why people would want me to explore that even more than I've already had. So I'm on that wave right now. Um, this particular producer name, his name is B. Chu. Um, he sent me some fire. He wanted me to arrange it. I don't know why, but I support the support, if you know what I mean. So when I was listening to his joint, before I play it, um, it kind of reminded me of like a Dr. Dre West Coast vibe or uh, that little stint that New York had when they had Ill Mind, Cardiac, and all of them. You know, it's kind of like more aggressive, more live, hi-hats, um, harder kicks, harder snares, and just like this atmosphere in the back. And when I listen to his, you know, my brain automatically connected the Matrix to all those beats that would sound like that. Even on my uncle project that I'm mixing right now, he, he picked a lot of beats like that. So I wanted to go that direction, however, um, this Drake look alive keeps memeing, keeps popping up on my radar. Like people are mentioning it to me. <clears throat> so instead of remaking that beat, I'm going to use that arrangement and kill two birds with one stone. I'm going to use their, talk about the arrangement of Drake's look alive and then arrange B choose joint to that format because I made a kind of like a side hand comment about look alive. I was like, so we got two bar piano loop riff. We got four bars of drums and we got a riser every eight bars. Is that what we're doing now? Let's do it. And um, I said that in jest, but that's the truth. A lot of um, dope songs are rooted in very simple arrangements, uh, a low amount of sounds or drums, and a very uh, catchy, simple melodies that don't take a lot of steps. And it's kind of hard to like, you know, figure out why that is. So I've pretty much dedicated the past couple of years to analyzing all this music so that I could learn it <laughs> low key. I'm teaching it everyone, but I'm learning it. And the more I do videos like this and the stuff I've done in the past, it's kind of like, I get it. I get it a lot better now. So it's pretty cool to see that never change. And of course you got someone like Drake on it. I mean, it could have been a totally different beat and I think it'll still have that energy if he kept that cadence on it, if you know what I mean. So I won't play the chopped and screwed version of it and let you hear it. I'm going to line it up to grid and then I want to take B Chu's joint and fill in the blanks. Yeah, yeah. So because this has like that extra two seconds of intro time, I'm going to move this further along. My starting point is going to be more like here. So I'm going to hold alt, move this over a little bit. And then what I got to do is zoom in on it. Because the most important thing to do is when you're making your template for arrangements is to make sure everything's on beat. Like that's off a little bit. Boom. This way, when I start tracking through it like this and making sure my snap is on bar, I can just hear everything real clear. Like. So it's really easy to move through. Now what I need to do is make time markers. Usually you could right click right here and do it, but I think when you don't have one, you have to manually go here first. And it won't let me move it over, so I'll just make another one. Forget it. Cool, so this is my real intro. I'm going to ignore that. And when I'm using this in 140 beats per minute, you're gonna notice like each of these are two bars instead of four. So what I might have to do is move this back down to 70 because I don't like that actually. I don't like it. I like looking at these blocks and knowing they're a bar each. So I just messed up my whole flow. It's all good though. Bong. Banger. <laughs> and it's not and it's not the piano <laughs> i can tell you it's not the piano doing that so <laughs> we got the intro all right and then this part is i want to talk about and expand on separate 
the intros. I was listening to a title playlist of like someone curated a playlist of like Drake's best songs or whatever that marked the different points in his career. And I noticed that most of his intros were four bars, of course, and that's common in a lot of instrumentals. However, the ones that weren't stood out to me, like the ones that weren't just like this and jump into the beat or jump into the hook. I noticed there's an extra four bars or eight bars in a lot of his joints that I like. And what I noticed uh, was that those are different beats. <laughs> like um, he has a few on views where there's like this singer, this female voice being pitched up or a dude's voice being pitched up over piano. And it does that for like four bars. And then the real beat comes in. Um, even Crew Love with The Weeknd, it has a different intro and it changes into something else. Or even on Pound Cake, it has a different four, eight bar intro and then it turns into something else. So it has this very Life of Pablo type of vibe to it. So my advice would be how to leverage that is to leverage that in your albums and mixtapes. Don't leverage that on online if you're trying to sell beats online. Just keep it simple. Keep it four and then drop into the fire like your hook or whatever. But if you have time and control over a full project, consider taking this extra space and doubling it and then creating a mood there. Um, a perfect example that popped up in my head was is that I do a lot of silly edits on Instagram where I'm like, not rapping for real. I'm just doing ideas to see how it sound. And those are usually eight bar incomplete loops too, like the theme of this series. But instead of me wasting them, because I know I'm not going to finish them, I could take those, loop them, and like, you know, add some crazy effects and filtering and reverb and use those as like short interludes to real beats or short interludes to other songs I might end up doing. So we never waste anything. Even you guys who are having a hard time finishing certain beats, whatever it is, if it's a four bar loop or eight bar loop, just remember you can keep that and then use that at the end of another beat or the beginning of another. Um, especially when you, it'll make more sense when you have songs more so than beats. But anyway, tomato, tomato, put that cell phone effect on it. Sound like it's a voicemail response. It's crazy. I already had a, a million ideas already going in my head. But anyway, so that's the intro. This gets tricky because that's the drop. And it gets kind of trickier there because after eight bars, which is eight of these blocks, you'd think the verse would kick in. But this is the actual verse. And what I noticed was that <laughs> Drake as a songwriter, he reversed something. He reversed a different type of arrangement. And I thought it was really interesting that he did it this way, so much so that I'm probably going to use it for now on. So peep what he did here. We got the intro for four bars. We got the hook for eight bars. And then there's a bridge. And then it's the verse. And then we got this. So that's a new verse because that's a different rapper, right? So that means this is the hook. And if we look at this from bird's eye view, right? We got an eight bar hook, technically an eight bar verse, the eight bar hook again. And then if we can do the math on it, that should be an eight bar verse. This should be something else. I see what they did. This rapper actually did 12. So he should have stopped right here and then Drake's bridge would have came in here. But now it's coming in here. So this is the bridge again or hook. And that's the outro for four bars. I'm going to call this a bridge so it makes sense in my head. But they ain't slick. They ain't slick. So really this arrangement is an eight bar arrangement, coincidentally. There's a change every eight bars that's significant. This one right here is the curious one though, because this rapper took what's on the hook and I guess his engineer cut it out. So there's a lot of stunts here. Yeah, this track is a long eight bar hook. 
with a bass drop every 12 bars or so. So I'm going to map that. So I'm going to go to B Choose joint. His joint was 155 beats per minute. Um, what's the quick math on that? What is that? 77.5? Yeah? No? Hold on. It's got to be an easier way to do this. Yeah. Tripping. So I can remove this now because I don't need it. I know this is the loose arrangement. And then I need to type in the value of 77.5. And the reason why I'm doing that instead of 155 of B Choose Joint is because I want to keep the placement markers the same. First thing I do when I import these is make sure they loop properly. That's always the hardest game in town when you're dealing with someone else's music. Fire. So <laughs> I need to change the spacing of all of these so I can see them better. So I can kind of identify what these sounds are. What I like to do is put bass towards the bottom so it stands out, so we can see that. In fact, let's gradient this so it's easier on my eyes. We're gonna do a gradient. Um, purple's always cool. Green is even cooler. Not helpful. They're not further away in the color spectrum. Um, purple to mm. cool, whatever, whatever. So we f I see the kicks, I see the drum loops, I see everything there. I need to move that bass line out the way though. So I'm gonna put the bass by itself. I see the title chords, so I'll move the chords down by themselves. This is a roll, this goes with drums. It looks like his two drums here are the same. They are. And then there's a pluck here. I move that down with the chords. There's a vocal chop. That sounds like that's gonna be his hook. Pad, hook, sweep, a transition effect. Sonar ping is kind of like an instrument. These are all drums, cool. So everything's separated how I need it. I wanna separate these as effects though. And I'm gonna separate this as a baseline. So now I can just go, all right, I see where everything is. And then here's just drums. Effects. Yeah. And this should be instruments. That's crazy. Um, I'm gonna move this though. Um, piano's up. Cool. So all I gotta do now is now that I have this divided mentally, like the different sections, now I just gotta move them into place. Now in Look Alive, the intro is just the pianos, right? So that's all I have to do. I keep those pianos there and move everything else. Since we're starting with the hook, everything else goes into the hook. So that's the first thing I pay attention to. Um, another cool thing is he has a lot of transition effects and like tom rolls and stuff. So I can reuse those as transitional elements. And this sonar ping, I'll use that in the intro as well. The sweep. Instead of putting it in the middle like he has it, I'm gonna put it at the end like Look Alive had it. Or at least that's my current instinct. Then right here, your tag comes in. And the rapper's supposed to shot you out right here. Drop.
All right, into the bridge. Now, executive decision. I like keeping the theory that the lead is in the intro. His lead, according to me, is going to be this vocal chop. So I'm going to move it in the intro. And I'm going to chop it up, though, because I'm, I wanted I wanted to show its hand, but I don't want it in the way. And I'll explain what that means when I cut it up. So I'm going to change my grid slicing to, like, half beats or something. And what I'll do is, actually, I'll use this uh, tool here to auto-chop it. Chop into beats. Cool. So something like this until the end. Cool, then I can drop all these. All right, and then it should come in with that energy from the tom roll. Perfect. So now the bridge is going to be trickier because I'm trying to follow this song. <laughs> but all I got to pay attention to is that it's 16 bars for a rapper, right? That's the only thing I really got to pay attention to. And then I can copy this. But I do want it to start in a bridge format. So what was cool about his track is that this sounds like a bridge without the vocal. And then, of course, the piano comes in and repeats the whole way. Stay, look, look alive. And then I know that sweep happens every eight bars. So I'm put it every eight bars. And you don't even have to count these. You can just tell by the color pattern. Now we got to get back into those drums in that bass somehow. I'll switch my snap back to bar for now since I'm not making any cuts. And his pad sound kind of has like a taper here at the end. So I'm going to have to reuse this right here. That's going to get tricky because that's going to break my every eight bars rule. But rules are meant to be broken. All right. And then I need something to make this better. Let's try these drums. Oh, yeah, that's fine. And since I'm not reusing any uh, transition effects here, because it kind of messed up my flow, I'm going to do a, a beat cut there. Um, I think it's a half a beat. And we can use a slicer tool and right click and do it smooth if you can actually cut it correctly. I know I can't half the time. And I'm using right click instead so it automatically removes it. <laughs> Because subconsciously, if a person is used to rapping 16 bars and you split it in half, 8 and 8, well, the 8 almost always has a transition effect. Here, it's just going to be this roll by itself. But I do need it to flow a little better than that. <laughs> I didn't cut it evenly. That's half the problem. And my bass line's missing, too, so I need to bring that back in. Back to bar mode, because when you're zoomed in like this, you're not going to know if you're off a, a beat or not. There we go.
no bass line here. Very similar to how Look Alive was when their verse started. There we go. Yeah, man. And that sonar is panned, so I'll use that as like a drum element. Now we gotta get back to the hook, which is called verse in this song format. And the perfect way to do it is to drop these. Okay, now I'm gonna copy and paste this, which has all the energy, but I'm gonna try to subtract energy from it because it's pretty much identical. So I'm gonna try to do like the opposite. I actually wanna get rid of all of this, like kind of thing. Yeah, buddy. Too soon. There we go. Fire. So, I have my verse. These tags don't make sense anymore. So I'm going to remove this one. I could have sworn there was a way to move these. I was about to say. So my actual song looks like intro to the hook to a bridge that goes into a 12 bar verse. Together they're 16, eight bar hook, back into a new verse, which would go here. But since Drake and them wrapped four bars and other guy wrapped 12, so they did 16 together outside of the refrains and stuff, um, this format won't be three minutes. However, to make it three minutes, just copy it twice. Like, don't go crazier than a two verse joint. Cool, and I'm not doing any stops there. Actually, I'll move this over. Boom. Easy money. three minutes oh 
all right, I will need to stop there and I'll bring the hook from the beginning back because I'm doing like this suedo bridge right here in the first two hooks. Normally, like the engineer or whoever the artist is, if they're a singer, you could filter this and just make it its own moment or you could just rap through it. You know, we hear that a lot, but it's more painfully obvious that this right here, the hook, is different than this one. So it's two different moments, two different atmospheres. However, at the end of the song, they saying what they say or they're doing their reframe and this is the hook. I don't want it to feel like it's going back into a bridge. I want it to keep going. So to do that, we just do a nice little stop at the end. And the stop means I'm removing audio. It's nothing crazy. You just change your grid back on to like a quarter beat and then use that right click trick to remove enough. You could change the amount. It really it really just based on where these uh sounds and transients and you can feel it. But it's real short though. That hook one more time. I'm just checking the intro because the intro is going to be the outro. I need my bar. And just fade it out. Now, nine times out of ten, when this is a song, it's going to end somewhere around here, around 3.30 or so, and they could just fade that out. You don't need this to be there, but you do just in case they decide to keep talking. All right, and then one thing, this sonar ping, I don't want it in the hook no more. I just realized that. So it's fine here when everything's playing, but it's not fine when everything's not playing because it was just here. Money and take it out here too. And they know that's the hook because the hook is the only one that has all these sounds besides the bridge. Same thing here. Outro is different because it's just a repeat. Boom. That's that, man. I ain't got to do much to that. That's that's where it is. That's where it needs to be, man. And, you know, tomato, tomato. They might like this double hook more, depending on who the rapper is. But if they have a singer or someone who's a little bit more harmonic in their words, that break is dope. And the energy just flows. The hi-hats move through most of the songs, so that's where all the energy is. This top layer up here. Um, Interesting. Very interesting. Very cool. But yeah, I had to make some adjustments on the fly. I couldn't do it completely uh, look alive, but it has the same tendencies, exactly the same. The bass drop, where the bass drop is, the uh, every eight bars, there's a riser type thing going on or some type of, type of special effect. You can always hear that a transition is coming, and that's pretty cool, a cool uh, nonverbal cue for someone who's writing songs. So hopefully this does well for the homie B2. I appreciate him and his support. Dope beat as always. Dope just like the other two guys that sent me some too last week. Um, I have no idea why you guys are watching me though. You guys got it. Trust me. You don't need anything I'm talking about. Um, what else is going on in this world though before I end this video? Oh, speaking of which, because all things are connected. Um, special salute to a young guru, a Jay-Z's engineer. Um, he gave me a shot on one of my YouTube discussions. And then on Twitter, he was saying how we're silly because we're worrying about the androids taking over. And um, definitely respect to him. It's crazy that he's watching my YouTube on top of that. But um, I agree with him in terms of, uh, it's not something you have to overreact to, knowing that things are becoming obsolete. 
However, at the same time, I do believe that you should be hyper aware of the future so you know where to position and focus on your time. And I just want to end this video on a brief discussion about that. Look, it doesn't matter if I'm using the SP, the iPad, all of that, right? Um, none of that replaces us, the human element. And most of the people who received my discussion have answered with but the humans, right? So, yeah, all these things are true of technology, but humans will always be creative. That wasn't my point, though. And I understand why they wouldn't catch my point because they don't watch my videos in order. My point was, what do we do? And, I, and everything I do is answering a workflow issue. Everything I do is answering what's hot in terms of plugins and DAWs and sounds and concepts and ideas. I'm always future thinking. I like I analyze the past to see the future kind of thing. And I, I don't mean that for the world. I mean it for the world or tribe that I'm in. My tribe is more so we're, we're taking calculated shortcuts. And what I mean is how I answer things about mastering today. Three years ago, people asked me questions about mastering. I suggested T-Rex because T-Rex had the tube modeled stuff and it sounded very interesting compared to everything else that was still kind of digital and sterile, like T-Rex versus Ozone. Well, if I'm doing hip hop, soul and sample beats and things before they became lo-fi, I would lean towards T-Rex because Ozone 5 or whatever it was, was too clean at the time. So I'd answer like that. And then you, you move forward to technology changes. Well, what do we use now? Everything's a little bit louder, but the transits are clear. And then I did the research. And I was like, well, we should be mastering or our final limiter should be Slate FGX because I'm always adjusting to the time we're in. I'm not adjusting to the overall view. So when I talk about these artificial intelligence things, what I'm saying is it replaces our need to learn certain things. Like a lot of live musicians hit me up about the doll conversation. And I was like, but you're live musicians. I don't expect it to affect you that way because you make your living by performing for humans. It affects my living because the things I teach and analyze can be put into a computer code. The reason why is because I already see it in my head. I know how to calculate everything that I'm doing that I teach. I, I would know how to train a system to do that. So if a person cared enough and seen that the algebra in my way of doing things, they could replace me and specifically, and not so much so just that kind of math, but the math of future casting. A lot of people don't buy into the hype that humans are psychic yet. And I, I tested a few of my responses on some of those comments on the other videos and um, people miss it. They miss what I'm actually saying in response to them. I'm not talking about technology. I'm talking about the future, the, the whole picture. And that, that's the side effect of the technology that we have coming with silver. Uh, um, the discovery, <laughs> not, it's not a discovery, <laughs> but it's a discovery. The discovery they made with silver and stuff, like how it deals with electricity and how, like, you know, we had a gold rush. Now we have a silver rush coming. And with the silver rush, they're going to use that for these new microchips and these new things that they stole from our ancestors. Whoa, going too deep. But anyway. Imagine this. I'll give you a picture of what this looks like, what this technology is and why I'm worried. Imagine instead of us having USB cables and things that we plug into walls that need to be grounded and routed to an electrical grid. These things are, are can be paint like you take these ingredients, you put it in a cup of water or whatever, and you you smear it on a wall. Let's say you're, you're, you're traveling downtown New York and you need to charge your phone real quick. Well, you open up this thing, you spray it or smear it on the wall, and then you take your phone or your electrical device and stick it to it somehow or make contact with it somehow. And that paint or that smear would charge up your phone. That's the kind of world we're, we're going towards. And that example is a more practical example of how people make businesses off of this discovery. But... When you apply that to everything else, the reason why we don't have better computers really is because of the overheating issue. Um, the heat generation, electric, your electric bill, everything. Everything has a cost. The better things get, the more expensive it is somewhere else or a different shortcut has to happen to make it work. And that might mean l parts that aren't as good as they ought to be so that we can afford them. Although if the parts were what they're supposed to be, it would be much faster and better for everyone who uses it. So they're always playing a balancing act when they create technology. 
the stuff I'm talking about requires no balancing act because it's more of a natural connection to the source, to the sauce, to the ether. So once they start commercializing that, everything that we're doing right now gets sped up. It's another exponential ramp, right? The guy from Microsoft and IBM was talking about like, I forgot, I, I know it, but I don't have it in front of my mind, but there's a word that they named after him. Like every so often the microprocessors get better, better, better. And they've asked him to predict when would that stop? Well, it doesn't stop with this technology because then it gets crazier. So then we hit another ramp of growth because of what that kind of electricity or uh, just source energy allows us to accomplish in terms of building things and durability of things. Um, imagine like your PS4 controller battery never died. Like it, it shouldn't die. It has no reason to die because they have batteries that last forever. They just don't sell them to us. But imagine if it didn't die, right? If the PS4 controller never died and you never had to plug it back up or interrupt your flow, you could get lost in those immersive video games for 24 hours instead of 12, right? It's almost like your that alert that your battery is dying reminds you to wake up and go eat and stuff. But <laughs> you, you take that and then you apply it to everything else that slows us down. Like me on my iPad. There's only so many Instagram live videos I can do before my iPad's down to 30% battery, right? So imagine if I never had that problem. I can be on Instagram live almost my whole day. And people who leverage attention in social media will use it all day. And they try to now. There's some live conversations going on now about some of the topics I've talked about. Understand what I'm saying? So I, I'm looking at it. I'm not looking at it like features. I never was. I wasn't looking at it like, oh, my God, they figured out how to, you know, Serato Samples going to chop samples itself. I know humans still have to put them in order. Oh, my God. Uh, Captain Quartz figured out chord progressions. But it didn't. It, it figured out what I've been doing. I've showed you guys all the websites. It just makes it faster. Meaning my leap from the beginning of a thought process to the end of it is no longer eight hours or seven hours or four. Now it's five minutes. So how much more can I do with those five minute chunks means I'm way more productive. That's why I'm happy for it. But we have to apply that same theory to people who develop as well because they have more money than us and they have more ideas than us and they can pay more people than us. Therefore, they can go a different direction than we could dream of. And they are. What do you think these flying crafts are like? Stay woke. Like it's a different there's a different world in this world. But for whatever reason, someone opened up the floodgates and let that pour into the civilian world and now that it's in the civilian world that's where my premonitions and everything is coming from i'm not talking about uh i'm not talking about ai replacing humans just on youtube i'm talking about the ai i'll talk about it later there's there's another there's a <laughs> there's a there's a <laughs> that's another discussion video i can't talk about that now it's not time and i said that in my last video it's not time to talk about how i know that or how i know this but yeah, man, just like I said, every chat supporting a real agent, if everyone you're talking to online ain't real, I want you to think about real life until next time. Peace.